Oh, hi everyone. Um, it did pour this week, um, but better than expected. It was over before I started. Had four injuries in the last week, or the last couple of weeks, which has killed my season really. Uh, there's a few players that did better than expected this week, but yeah, look, I still won a few leagues, so I'm happy about that because I was expected to lose just about every league this week based on projected scores. But as we know, they're out of wax a lot of the time. Went down over a thousand in ranks. So that's not good. Did, did slightly better than last week, which is a bit of a surprise considering I had more rookies this week on field. So let look at my side. It's not great. Um, it's been a bit of a disaster last couple of weeks. Just what's gone wrong has gone wrong. Uh, but it could be worse. So we've got Sheasel. Uh, 75, pretty bad to be honest. It's one of his probably weaker performance of the year. Not, the, not his worst, I don't think, but it'll be up there. His bottom five performance. Yeah, it's it wasn't too great, just like most of North Melbourne. We got smashed, which was expected. They were playing Sydney up there, but you know, it was doing all right the last month, uh, North Melbourne. A surprise a few sides. And then Day Costs, 89, he did too much better. Um, and he's, yeah, he's perf- performed poorly the last couple of weeks by his standards. Um, in terms of super coach standpoint, it's not really a, a huge deal because everyone ho- owns him. So, I mean, look. Probably not quite as good as it was last year, uh, but he's still up there. And then you've got Weefield, 113. Um, he's actually done well the last couple of weeks. He's actually bounced back a bit. So I was looking to get rid of him at one point or on the fence. So I won't do it now because it's just, as long as he's on field and scoring and doesn't get injured, um, that will just make me happy. Um, yeah, 113. Yeah. That, yeah, that's just, you know, standard score. And then Luke Ryan, 98. So he, it's another disappointing score from Luke Ryan. He's really dropped off. I'll put the VC on on him, which wasn't particularly that great, although the, a lot of vice-captain options this week weren't that great either. So, uh, I mean, it wasn't a huge deal, really, as long as I get the captain right, which, as you can see, was a little bit better. Yeah, but not, 98, I mean, it's not a disaster score, but for someone you paid up for, you want a lot more. Uh, or a bit more output. And, you know, three men all disappointing. They should have won that game. Um, and Houston, 114. So that, that's a, yeah, a bit better score from Houston after a couple of poor weeks. So I'm happy about that. And then Nick Martin, 142. Sort of saved around a little bit and sort of saved my team, Essendon, uh, from getting absolutely smashed, to be honest. Oh, man, it sort of carried us. It's four goals. Yeah, 142. Can't ask for much more. It's by far my top defender, uh, which is great. There's a lot of people thinking about getting rid of him. Look, I just kept him for a reason because I had no other option, really. And look, he's going to get a lot of the ball, and he can move down forward. I guess he can play multiple roles. I mean, there's mixed opinions on him. But yeah, look, 142. I mean, yeah, I can't ask for much more. And then Sharon Maker 61 is okay for a rookie backup. And then Warner's obviously he's probably dead rookie from going on going on forward. And then look, we've got on to Pelly 108. So you'd be disappointed with how he performed if you had him as a vice captain option or even a captain option. Um, they still won the Bulldogs, which is the most important thing for them. I mean, yeah, I guess it's it's not a huge deal. Unless you maybe had him as a captain. And Zach Butters, I took as a captain option, sort of gambled with the VC, but I was playing gold case. It's probably not the best matchup, probably an average matchup, and it, that was pretty much a case, 120 points. I mean, that's okay. Uh, better than quite a lot of other people who had a, you know, they could have had it on Merritt, you know, or a Walsh, or a Sarong, or a Bond, and just, I would have scored them that way. That's not a huge problem. Uh, but this is where, you know, there's sort of, Frustration becomes, and you got a lot of frauds in the midfield, which we'll explain here. So we got Merritt, eighty-two. I mean, he did a great last week, won us the game. Great job. This week was poor, just like most of our side. Just couldn't adapt to the wet conditions. I mean, if eighty-two is one of his lowest scores, I mean, it's not a huge problem. But I mean, if you want to go for brown load, um, it's not great. Uh, just have, yeah, if you have multiple players who just underperform, it does have a huge problem. And that's what, what we've got here. We've got Walsh, 95. 
And you got Tom Green, 93, who did well fantasy-wise, but not great you know, super coach wise Had a lot of the ball, but wasn't really effective with it. There was a lot of handballs as well. Walsh didn't do that great. So he's another fake primo. And same with Green. And Sarong's dropped off a little bit lately too. It's good for the first half of the season though. And Dawson was actually okay. Not great, but yeah, it was okay. And then Matt Rao, who I traded in, which probably shouldn't have, but there was no other one who no other player really wanted it uh, for that price after getting merely injured, which is sort of really uh, been a frustrating selection. If I got rid of him at the bye, it would have been a lot better situation if I brought a Neer or a Dunkley or a Gordon. Uh, but, you know, it's just one of those things um, that's just frustrating. It's sort of killed, you know, it sort of killed my season, you know, Miller, because he gets injured, which is not really his fault. But he had a poor month prior, thinking he had like one good game. And then you got people having Dunkley, Neil, and Gildan. Um, it's it just killing me, not owning them this year. Or picking them at the buy, which I probably should have and got rid of one of these frauds. Probably would have been Dawson or Green um, if I had that luxury option. I think I traded. Some of the trades I've brought in, like with some of the rookies, just haven't performed up to standard. Or oh, haven't generated enough cash is what I wanted. I think was the main problem. We've had a few good rookies, but there's just some that, you know, I traded in a couple ones that this didn't quite work out. And then I had Sweet, who ended up being a stuff up. I mean, if you play multiple games in a row when they've been too much of a problem, and then I have to trade this player in, and this player didn't play, but another player would trade it out and end up doing well. And it's just frustrating things like that. It was sort of a letdown with the midfield. And I think, too, this round, having Heaney out, I did spot with Downing, which we'll get to in a minute. It was a bit of a killer blow, and not having Fisher in too. And then Manus, 75. See, he did all right again. Not as good as last week, but 75 will take as an emergency option. And actually outscored Matt Rowe, funny enough. So Matt Rowe has been in disappointment the second half of the season. Um, I mean, I probably should have traded him, but I had no one else. I mean, ideally, I should have traded out Miller for Rosie a few weeks ago, which I was thinking... Um, of doing it, I would have been had an extra hundred k, you know, plus way more scoring, and I could, could have used that extra hundred k, um, you know, for a, another option or just to have it, you know, as a safety net just in case another injury happens. Uh, but it is what it is. Uh, this is in Jamaica and just bad luck. I was on the fence about getting Rosie, and I didn't make that option because I think I didn't want to waste a trade on on a player who isn't injured yet. Um. But you know, it's one of those things. If it was early in the season, I probably would have brought Rosie in for that price, to be honest. But it is what it is. I can't really do anything now about it. And then you've got English here, 85, which is disappointing. Um, even though the Bulldogs won. Uh, it wasn't going to be the easiest matchup for him, but I mean, it is what it is. And then you've got Kruger, 56, which isn't that great. And I'm losing, what, 50, 60 points to a Sherry or a Grundy type or even a Marshall, losing out on them. So I hope Gorn either comes back in next week or the week after and if Kruger keeps his spot. Colin would have got all the injuries, but they get a few good players back in. Uh, that's going to have a bit of an impact. I still reckon Colin would have better off long-term having Kruger than Cox in. We'll just have to see what they're going to do. I don't think either are that great, to be honest. And then Flan is 106, so he, he did all right. And then you got Zorko, 93. And then Jackson, 116, so he's done all right the last couple of weeks. So, yeah, Darcy didn't play, so it sort of helped his scoring. That's what I mean. He needs Darcy not playing. It just doesn't work out for both. But I still think Darcy's a slightly better Rockman at the moment. No, but I think Jackson... I don't know what Freo are going to do with Darcy. If Darcy gets trad off to another team and he doesn't get injured, he'd be probably one of the top five Rackman, probably top three in scoring, I reckon. And you got Kuno, who did better this week, uh, a lot better, and really should have done even more. He got three goals, seven. So that really sums up my round or last couple of weeks, really. Kuno could have easily got 120, 130 if, he was, if it was 7 3. You know, would have won cart in the game. But it's like, what if that, what if that? And it just wasn't to be. And then on to some of the really only positive news, Dowling in 100, 
one. Uh, sort of save my round really a little bit. So that, that's great. You know, it's good to have like an reliable rookie now um, as an emergency option, hopefully for the rest of the season. And then Richards um, had a good first half, but it was crap after half time. And I thought he would get like 80, which would have been all right. Uh, but uh, it's just very frustrating, which is why I can't have rookies on field. Or half rookies, whatever. You know, I can't have you know, non primos on field. And just having Fisher, Gorn, Miller, and Heaney all out and run around, one hit, over. You know, it just kills your season. Uh, with Heaney, he's only for a week. And Fisher, I was hoping he was going to get up this week, but he didn't. So I'm not sure that was tactical. But if he plays this week, that's great. I can take off you know, Downing and Richards. Um, and then I'll we'll probably bring back Heaney in, which I would have to anyway. Swap him with Downing. And that'll sort of be all right for the four line. I only have like one yeah, non primo one few, or maybe you can argue Matt Rao. Uh, which, I mean, I don't know who else is going to bring in anyway. As she stood ruck, so if Gorn comes back, he may not next week and after, that will be all right. The reason is I haven't made a trade because I've only got three left, and you know, who knows with another injury or some drama that happens. Oh, I'm not going to take the bullet because I, I don't want to have a rookie. I don't want to have a nil score in the last couple of weeks. Uh, I'd rather have a 50 or a 60 or even a 40 than a donut. That's just what it is. Um, I mean, my season's finished anyway. I mean, ideally I want to get in the top 5,000 um, this season. Uh, but I won't even get in the top 10,000. Uh, and it's just frustrating. I mean... It was over at the first five rounds of my season, really. But then I did came back and was looking to get in the top 10K finish. But, you know, the buys happened and a bit of bad luck uh, straight after it just killed my side. My season for Supercoach. I mean, I'm sure there's a lot worse case scenarios. But, I mean, you play this so long now. Um, you be, should be getting at least into 10K, bare minimum, top 10K. Uh, but in future, I think... What's really cost you this season? It's players like Tom Green, Jordan Dawson, particularly at the start, and then Miller towards the second half of the season. Just haven't quite lived up to their first half of the season. Um, and, that, and that's the main kicker. Um, yeah, if they had a poor start, I can just trade them off and bring in either a rookie or a, you know, a primo you know, to cover them. But unfortunately, I couldn't do that. And it's just frustrating. When that happens, and then you have players, you know, just underperform or get injured. Um, with Gorn, I guess everyone's in that scenario, and then Heaney with this week, which has been unlucky. It's not really, you can't really predict that. No, but I, I mean, it is what it is. Um, I guess Sam Walsh as well, but a lot of top play, a lot of top coaches picked him anyway. Uh, you know, perhaps I should have got a Neil Dunkley Gordon because they're going to go back to form because they finished off the season strong last year, particularly Gordon. You know, you bring those players in. Yeah, you know, I should have predicted that, but who knows? You know, footy's a funny game. I mean, I didn't knew Dawson was overpriced to begin with. I don't know why I started him. Every other play here, you know, I sort of had a feeling you know, they could go off or be a bit more consistent than what they had. This has never been one player that's really absolutely dominated um, throughout the entire season, like hitting a 130-plus average. I think Gorn was on track of that, but he's dropped off a bit. I mean, I'm not going to make any changes this week unless there's a laid out or something like that. To be honest, there's just no point. No, unless, you know, Fisher doesn't get up or something like that, maybe, but who knows, I don't care anymore. I'm not going to be able to achieve the goal that I had for this season. Um, I mean, it is what it is. I can probably keep in the top 10, 15, top 15,000. I guess that'd be okay from where I'm at now. Um, 10,000 be a miracle now. Yeah, I need everything to go my way. Oh, thank you for watching.